Today I'm going to go through and show how I built my mini moon board. And I'm going to do that in sort of a weird way. I'm actually going to use the free SketchUp software that if you go to app.sketchup.com and log in with your Google account, um, you have access to. And hopefully I won't get in trouble for this. I mean, it's free and everything, but it's just such a great tool and you can really do a lot with it, even just the free version. I opened this video with a, a clip of the, the finished product, but I'll kind of show what my blueprint looked like. Um, and I'm pretty happy because the final product definitely turned out to look just like this. And turns out that it's it feels really, really bomber. Being as small as the mini moon board is, um, you can see here that even uh, with my little bit of extra headroom here, that's only seven foot three inches total. Um, easily fits inside of an eight foot ceiling. Um, in the video that I opened with, that is my living room. That has a standard eight foot ceiling, so you can see how much is there. If for some reason you want to add some more stability, you could easily place uh, another two by six along here. So I will go over at the end of the video, I'll kind of go through a spreadsheet and talk about all the lumber I bought and just sort of come up with a materials list. The first thing I'd like to do is just kind of go over how all of it came together because that to me was the most exciting part to see if the process I had thought up would actually work. So I have another um, file and, and I'll share this file. I'll make this available with like a Google Drive link or something that, that people can, can open up and use because I do want this to be like a video for someone like me when I started out on this. Um, just a complete, complete beginner. <laughs> I never took shop class, uh, I had no experience building anything, um, didn't really have any tools or anything. I will say that if you're like me and are a complete beginner, uh, reach out in your friend network and see who maybe has some experience doing carpentry. I got super lucky, one of my, one of my best friends is uh, really skilled uh, working with this stuff, had all the tools I could possibly need. Um, even so, I did end up buying some things myself, and I can kind of talk about that in the materials list and stuff of like what what I think you'll want, and then maybe uh, maybe what to sort of ask around to borrow if you're only doing a one-off project like this. For instance, things like a miter saw or something like that can be pretty expensive. But if you know someone who has one and knows how to use it, uh, you don't have to run the risk of being a noob and cutting a finger off, and uh, also save some money. Okay, so like I said, I'll make this exact design available. Basically all I did was create this sort of exploded view of all the different parts of the wall. And I was gonna just kind of go through and show the order in which I constructed everything. And whenever I put together the materials section of this video, I'll go over like the, the specific uh, criteria I was looking for in plywood. For now though, uh, and this kind of goes with, with all the materials that I'll just be sort of throwing together here uh, to, to form this wall, I'm really just going to do, um, I might talk a little bit about the size of things and the number of things, but I won't really talk about the quality or properties of the materials. Uh, I ended up buying three sheets of plywood. Um, one of the things that makes the plywood, or sorry, one of the things that makes this project so easy to throw together is the fact that you can just buy two full sheets of plywood and not do anything to them, uh, which is great. Uh, so these are four by eight pieces of plywood, four feet by eight feet. And then this little guy, it's only, uh, I think it's only six feet by three feet. Let's see. Yes, sorry, sorry. Six inches by eight feet. So it's only six inches tall. Okay, so the first thing that I did uh, was construct the little kickboard. And the way that I started that was I looked at my blueprint. And I just had this up on my computer. And I looked back here where I added these uh, measurements. And I went through with the tape measure and just marked where I wanted each of the three inch support beams, these little guys, where I wanted those to be spaced, like 
positioned. Because um, you can see that it goes one foot five, five inches, five three eighths inches here, but then it's shorter and then it's longer and then we're back to the standard one foot five three eighths. That was my <laughs> way of dealing with the fact that once I place the markings for where the, the T-nut spacing, I realized that if this was over and it was standardized, that would have actually lined up right with this line of bolts here. So I just moved it over a little bit and did a lot of double checking when I made this, uh, this sketch up to make sure that none of these supports would overlap with the T-nut holes once those had been placed. So yeah, so I looked at my diagram, got the uh, spacing for these, and then I took my my four by eight, sorry, my two by six, eight footer, and marked out where I wanted all the little three inch supports. And then without drilling them in or doing anything, the first thing that I did was just place it, place each one on top where I had uh, marked them. And then what I did was I took the top part of the kickboard, which is just another eight foot two by six, and I placed it right on top of all of those and had a friend kind of help me, uh, my, my friend who was working with me, we just made sure that all of these stayed straight. Um, and once we had this, again, nothing was fastened yet. I just had this like a little sandwich just sitting here. Um, then I started placing the screws. And I, I screwed in from the top, obviously, because the bottom is on the ground. I can't access it. So I screwed in from the top, and I did, I started with, I, I basically on this side did outside. So I did really close, like right where my mouse pointer is. I did a screw here, did a screw here, and did it more on the outside of every single one. And then once I had done that, and they were all fastened on one side, I basically just flipped it over and on this side where each of these supports are since I went on the outside on the other on the other side since I did outside on the reverse I did inside on this side that's just to make sure that the screw coming in from the bottom doesn't hit the screw that you're coming in from the top um, Obviously my language here is pretty relative to the position of this thing and might be confusing, but hopefully that sort of gets the point across. So once I was done with that um, and everything felt solid, I basically had four screws, two on each side, holding each one of these supports in. Um, I just took my panel of plywood over here and fastened it onto a kickboard, just like that. And that's your kickboard. What I used to fasten the plywood, and this is three quarter inch plywood, to the kickboard, were number eight self-drilling wood screws, or deck screws. Um, they were two inches long. So number eight, two inch long, self-drilling deck screws, or wood screws. Um, as far as I could tell, they, they were basically the same thing in the home, home uh, improvement store that I went to. Uh, so yeah, and then for, combine, uh, for fastening the 2x6s together, uh, so this 2x6 to the 3-inch separators to, you know, fastening all this, I used number 10 3-inch screws uh, of the same type. So self-drilling wood or deck, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so let me just group all this stuff together. So the next thing I did uh, was basically add these little side spacers which serve a pretty pretty distinct purpose um, 
two pretty distinct purposes actually, and then threw on the legs that extend forward. And you'll see in the final product of what I actually built, instead of cutting this two by six down to five feet seven inches, I just left it as a six footer because I just figured it wouldn't really be in the way and having the, what is it, five extra inches wouldn't be a terrible thing as far as just some extra support on the, uh, you know, this axis here coming out this way. Um, I will say if you call an audible in the middle of uh, building the thing, try to remember <laughs> because we made a mistake and actually instead of putting this where I had measured out at five foot seven inches, this, this piece here, this big U piece, we put it on the end because we totally forgot that I had made that decision. And that was my bad. So, okay, so back to these spacers. The purpose of these are one, to allow for the support that connects to the top of the wall to be able to come all the way to the ground and actually rest on the ground as opposed to resting on top of this two by six right here where the pointer is. Um, I've seen this design in a pretty popular freestanding YouTube, how to build a freestanding wall YouTube video that I reference very, very heavily whenever doing this. So I'm sure it would have been fine doing that. I just, I just sort of like the idea of this touching the ground. And I had seen um, some random, random Google images of people building their wall this way. And I just liked it. So I went with it. The other really cool benefit of having this spacer here and having it the exact uh, size of your kickboard, which is six inches, is that when you place a joist hanger, and I'll be sure to get a picture of this, but when you place a joist hanger on the end, it can fasten to this spacer. And if this spacer wasn't here, if this spacer wasn't here and this two by six was attached to the kickboard, you would have to like hammer down the joist hanger onto the top of this. Uh, and if this doesn't make much sense, like don't worry about it, just, just add a spacer. Um, or you can buy a special joist hanger that is designed to go on the end of a deck where, where there's no uh, plane to attach the, the, uh, the angle that pops out here of the joist hanger. Sorry for that language, it's probably not very clear, but they make special joist hangers if you decide to just keep it on the end. I didn't. I ordered a pack of six joist hangers. I'm really happy with them. They're very adjustable and easy to install. They came with their own uh, screws. And yeah, since I had bought that pack, I was like not gonna go out and buy another set of end joist hangers that didn't match just so that way that would be flush. Okay. So yeah, so the next thing I do, add these spacers, add this leg. So I think I have my spacers over here. So yeah, uh, to attach these, I'll probably try to get a, uh, probably try to get a good picture of sort of the, the screw alignment on these. Just before you go to attach anything, just think about what you're doing. <laughs> that sounds really stupid or obvious, but but just think ahead. Like, okay, if I'm going to drill in four screws on this spacer going in to the kickboard, what could they hit? What could they run into? Well, they could run into some of the screws that you've applied on your kickboard to attach it to the uh, base back here. You could accidentally drive a screw into one of the screws that's holding on the top two by six. Um, I'd like to just sit and kind of prescribe exactly the order and spacing and all that stuff for your screws, but it'd be a waste of time because you know it. It'd be better. It would be a better exercise to just pay attention to what you're doing as you go. And if you have spent all your own money on this, it's actually really easy to remember to think ahead and pay attention because you really don't want to spend more money than you have to. And that was a big motiva uh, motivator for me to just slow down and think about the order of my fastener placement. Um, so yeah, just a few words of caution there. 
Okay, so once those spacers were on, I'm just gonna group all this so we can sort of visualize it all being one piece now. Um, yeah, we're ready to attach the little side legs. So let me move this over to create a little space here. Okay, so I've got my side legs over here. Again, in, the, uh, in my SketchUp, they are five foot seven inches long, but in my actual final product, they're just six footers that extend past where the front supports are. Okay, so. And same thing, same, same words of uh, warning about how you place, how you attach this. Um, once you start in on it, it's pretty obvious where you should place screws, but um, don't let that trick you into uh, being, I guess, just too comfortable just throwing screws in. Um, definitely think about where the other screws are and whether your fasteners are going to hit them. Okay, so yeah, once we got those two pieces attached, go ahead and group these. Next thing that we did was build this U. So this U here is an eight foot two by six. And then I think they're seven foot, yeah, seven foot three inch um, cut two by sixes. And just make sure when you attach these <laughs> that you make sure that the, the eight footer is on the inside, kind of show you. Just make sure you don't do what I'm getting ready to show you. Don't place this here um, because then your spacing is going to be all off and then you'd have to add another spacer and you'd have to cut an angle at the top to hit the ply. It would just, just don't do this. Um, if you have accidentally done this, just fix it before um, you go too far. And it's funny be because when me and my friend were building this, uh, we fastened this one on properly and then we went over to this side and I was lining it up and without really thinking, I set it on here. And my friend, being experienced, was almost immediately like, hey, you're doing that different from the other side. So again, if you have a partner who can kind of double check what you're doing and you can double check what they're doing, that's awesome. Uh, especially as it gets late into the night, <laughs> you start making more mistakes if you're just really psyched and you don't want to do it. You don't want to save it for tomorrow. Yeah, just make sure that uh, you're checking each other's work and stuff. Okay. So once you've fastened those, uh, you just take take that and throw it in here, attach it right to the end like that. And then you've got this cool looking little structure here. And yeah, uh, same thing here. When you're placing your fasteners, your screws into this, make sure that they're not going to hit the fasteners that you placed attached, like creating the U. Um, so just always be mindful of that and you should be fine. Okay, so this is where things started getting fun and interesting because um, all this stuff just kind of lines up. It's just sitting on your floor. So... Again, I'll later talk about like, you know, how I how we did these miter cuts and things like that. But uh, the next thing you want to create is this this piece here. Uh, the way we created this was, if you'll recall, I talked about how when I was going to create the kickboard, I took the bottom two by six and I just took a pencil and marked. I measured out and marked. The, uh, where each of these spacers was going to lie. I did the same thing on this 2x6. So that way when we were attaching this, and obviously we weren't like holding it at this angle, we just had it flat on the ground. But whenever we were attaching it, I just made sure that I put each of these 2x6s in the markings that I had put on the, the top part, the top 8-footer here. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so once we had that, 
we had to figure out how to get it so that these weird angle cuts, this these weird this weird wood here was flat across across the kickboard without I mean while also like supporting it with just two people. Um and what we basically did, uh, which I couldn't come up with a good way of doing this, but my friend, like I said, is experienced, and he was like, we'll just use clamps. We'll use clamps to hold it in place while we work on the backside. So what, what that looked like was basically we, and I'll actually kind of, let me spin this to kind of give a little bit better of a representation of what we did. So after we had attached this, it was... Uh, what's going to be a good way to spin this? Let's see. Nope. Okay, so that's rough, but that should be a good visualization. So once we had we had all these attached on the ground, and make sure when you're attaching them that each one of these angles is pointed the same direction. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way you start with. Actually, I would definitely, if you're in an eight foot ceiling, just make sure that when you set these up on the ground that they look exactly like they do right here with each of the little dagger tips being on the top portion, not on the bottom portion, because otherwise you're gonna have to flip the whole eight foot thing around. And in SketchUp, this doesn't look like it's very big, but this is a really large um, part that you're not gonna want to have to flip around. Just just line it up exactly like it looks right now on, on your floor and then attach your the top 2x6 to all of these 2x6s. Okay, so once we had that, we moved it into, we just sort of positioned it in here. We got it inside of this box and then once we had it in there, we actually were pretty detailed about having it rest with this back point right on the edge if you can see this right on the edge of the back of the plywood the back edge of the plywood so we basically had each of these legs resting right on top of the kicker like this and then from there uh, so it looked just like this um, my friend stood on this side I stood on this side, and then we slowly but surely and carefully <laughs> uh, started lifting. I hope this snaps on the right thing. Let's see. Nope, that's not it. I have to edit this part to get it to do what I want. Actually, I think I can just, yeah. Okay, so what we did was we just slowly lifted it up. Oh, shoot, that point isn't in the right place. Actually, it is. Okay, so for visual visualization purposes, this isn't going to look quite right, but basically what we did was we just slowly lifted it up like that. And don't worry about the way that's cutting through because in real life, the wood won't just seep through the other wood. It will hoist over it. Um, but what you end up with is a nice little area where these, where the top of your main stud supports and your uh, support here overlap. So what you can do is just place a bunch of clamps on here. We placed two clamps on each side and that was strong enough to uh, hold that in place, which unfortunately I didn't get a picture of this because we were in like, I think we were sketched out that this might fall. So we were just being really careful around here. Definitely weren't thinking about taking you know pictures or anything at this point but it, it held and um, while it was holding let me just kind of clean this up because like I said this is a product of the software not actual real life physics um, let me move this into okay so once we had it up like that and we had this area clamped and this looked pretty flush um, we just went you know, behind the wall here, and we started attaching each joist hanger. And again, I really like the joist hangers I, I ended up purchasing. They come in two parts, one for the right side, one for the left side, and they have these little tabs where they interlock. 
and they're adjustable um, if you had like a slightly different size wood or something, I guess. But yeah, we just went through and attached joist hangers to each one of these. Once our joist hangers were in place, we went over here and with our clamps still on, uh, I ended up placing two 3 8 inch grade 8 bolts uh, in like connecting as the as the con fasteners between these two pieces of wood and I, I tried to just get something extremely strong and then I you know reinforce it by using two of them I've seen videos where people use a single one for an area like this um, I just like bought way more bolts than I needed to so I just went ahead and put two in here and I'm, I'm happy with that so like I said, while the while the clamps were still on, we were able to place one of those bolts. Drill th we we drilled through, placed the bolt, tightened it down really tight. Um, then we could remove the clamps because it was secure, and then we drilled in one more bolt through there. And I can show a picture of kind of what that looks like. Um, and then once we had one side done, we while the clamps were still on, did the other side by placing one bolt, removing both clamps, placing the other bolt. And then from there, we had this thing that starts looking like a climbing wall, um, obviously just without the plywood. So let me group all this stuff. Yeah, and then that just sort of leaves, I can get rid of these because didn't end up using them. That just leaves your uh, plywood. Now, this stuff's heavy. And if you're doing this on your own, um, be careful. <laughs> it's, it's not going to be fun. It wasn't that fun with two people. Um, but again, we use clamps to kind of solve this problem. So let me actually sort of break this down. So we had one piece of plywood just flat on the ground. Sorry, we had both plywood, pieces of plywood fly on the ground. The lower part is really easy to kind of secure because once you get in here and you're, you know, you're both on each side holding this piece of plywood up, it's pretty easy to just get it into the position you want. Um, I think I've got the wrong point here. It's pretty easy to get it to the position you want, and it doesn't have to be super precise because precise you have a little room to play with. Just make it to where it looks like it's pretty flush with your kickboard. Um, but it was really easy for me to just kind of sort of do a knee bar and get my knee wedged against this, against the ground, and it wasn't painful. It didn't really feel like it was doing too much weight. And then once it was secure there with my knee, I just had two clamps on hand again, and I clamped the plywood to the 2x6. Just use a large clamp. You can get the back of the 2x6 with the front of the plywood and just place two of those and then my buddy was doing the same thing on the other side and then we just started <laughs> drilling in tons of those two inch screws the the number eight two inch screws again just a reminder all of the other work except for the plywood we use number ten three inch screws for this part we use number eight two inch screws for the plywood so bottom panel super easy uh, Top panel was basically the same strategy. It just required more strength. Uh, so to get that into place, we just carried it like over to the wall, got it inside here. Um, I believe we did this part one at a time. Uh, so we both held it up into place. And then I secured my side and tried to put some weight against the wall while my friend held up his side with one arm and quickly applied one clamp. As soon as you get a single clamp on there, everything gets much easier. And then obviously, the more clamps, the easier it gets. So yeah, once we had this sort of clamped in place, we just repeated the same process of drilling in a bunch of those number eight screws. And yeah, that was it once we were Done with that, the, the wall was built. So for the next part, I'll kind of gather up my, my notes and spreadsheets and things that I had put together on cost and all of that. And I will, yeah, move on to that now.